Hi, in this short video, I'm going to talk about how you can model thermal expansion in a finite element simulation in a quick and easy way. So thermal expansion is very easy. It's uh, something that happens to all materials. Basically, when you heat it up, they grow in size. When you shrink them, when you cool them down, they shrink. So this is the thermal expansion that you see experimentally. And it's also easy to incorporate that in a finite element simulation. There are specific functions in Habergas, ANSYS, ls etc., that allow you to specify how much the, the volume change with temperature. When it comes to the poly UMOD library or material user material models in general, it's kind of funny to know perhaps that the finite element solvers typically don't uh, use the thermal expansion commands that come with the software when you use them together with using material model. So you have to actually specify the thermal expansion as part of the polyumon material model itself. And I'll show you today how you can do that. But first, let's talk a little bit about Abacus and uh, how that happens here. In Abacus, you can specify the thermal expansion uh, in the following way. You can have an isotropic thermal expansion with, where you have a temperature dependent alpha term. We have an orthotropic where you give the thermal expansion in three orthogonal directions, for example, as a function of temperature. So it's very easy to do. For ANSYS, ANSYS has done something really interesting and different. They, in fact, have three different ways in which you can specify the thermal expansion behavior of your material. And this is just from their manual. It's uh, One is just the secant way, which is the traditional way to do it, I would think. Then can you have an instantaneous or basically the slope of the thermal strain versus temperature command. Or finally, you can just give the thermal strain directly as a function of temperature. So that's how ANSYS defines these things. And other finite element programs will have similar uh, options for you. If you want to use any of these, um, you should know that M Calibration, our software for calibrating material models, can now also calibrate thermal expansion. We have a new load case for thermal expansion where you input the temperature, you input the thermal expansion what it should be, and that can then be added to the calibration steps. I typically do this a thermal expansion calibration as a separate step compared to the traditional stress strain calibration, but you can do all at once if you like. Um, we also have updated our T and V model. That's the material model that I've shown in many of my videos to be the most accurate material model for many thermoplastic rubbers and thermosets. So this new version of the TMV model also has uh, two versions of thermal expansion that you can add to it. One is a linear thermal expansion. It's a constant uh, linear thermal expansion coefficient. So it's very easy to use. And we also have a piecewise linear thermal expansion model. And uh, this model works similar to the ANSYS model where you specify the thermal strain directly as a function of temperature. And we have specified in our code that this should be five segments of these. So you specify the thermal strain as a function of temperature directly, not the slope of this kind of curve, which is what's done in Abacus. But it's all very easy to do. And here's just a graphical representation of whatever you, you may have experimentally seen. So to summarize, it is super easy to measure the thermal expansion exp uh, exp experimentally. It's also really easy to use it in a finite element simulation software. It doesn't really matter if you use one of the native material models or if you use a poly U mod material model like the TMV model. You can specify the thermal expansion if that's something that's important to your finite element simulations. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.